What's up, YouTube? This is Two Raw Four TV. All right, so um, this is a request that I got from one of my subscribers, and uh, they wanted me to do a video on two coaches uh, who also happen to be two former NBA players, Rick Adelman and Lenny Wilkins. And which one was better, I guess. And, um, off the top of my head, before I go further in this video, I would go with Lenny Wilkins. I mean, just from based off of what I've seen, uh, what I know that they accomplished, and what I know. All right, so let's look at Rick Adelman first. Uh, Rick Adelman actually played in the NBA for a while, did not have a Hall of Fame career. Um, I believe he was drafted in 1968 in the seventh round of the 79th overall pick. He was selected by the San Diego Rockets, of course now known as the Houston Rockets. He played point guard, and he played from 1968 to 1975. He played for the Rockets. The Portland Trailblazers, the Chicago Bulls, the New Orleans Jazz, now the Utah Jazz, and the Kansas City Omaha Kings, now of course the Sacramento Kings. And in his career he averaged 7.7 .7 points, 2.4 rebounds, and 3.5 assists per game. He retired from the NBA in 1975, which is actually the same year if I'm not mistaken, Lenny Wilkins retired from the NBA. And uh, for, he started his coaching career in 1977. Uh, in 1977, he began coaching at uh, Chickamauga Community College. And he coached there for six years. Then in 1983, he became an assistant head coach under legendary head coach Jack Ramsey. And um, he was an assistant coach for there for six years. Um, when Mike, uh, excuse me, when Jack Ramsey was, was fired back in 1986 and replaced with Mike Shuler in 1986, Adelman was retained on the coaching staff. And when Shuler was in turn fired after the 88-89 season, Adelman was promoted to interim head coach. And after the 89 season, when he went to the playoffs, Rick Adelman became the permanent head coach. And that's how his head coaching career started. And he stayed a head coach for many, many years with a very successful stint with the Portland Trailblazers, a not-so-successful stint with the Warriors, uh, he's known for his stint with the Sacramento Kings, the Chris Webber years. He also coached the Houston Rockets and coached the Minnesota Timberwolves. He retired from coaching in 2014. As a coach, he was three times NBA All-Star Game head coach, 1991, 2001, and 2003. And he won the Chuck Daily Lifetime Achievement Award back in 2023. As an NBA coach, he had a lifetime record of 1,042 and 749. 1,042 uh, wins and 749 losses for a 58.2% win percentage. Uh, as far as what I remember, uh, I believe he coached a version of the Princeton offense like the Four Corners offense um, very successful coach very well liked uh, he also had some criticism um, some of the criticism that he got was that he was not a guy that worked with younger players. He liked to work with established talent. 
That's one of the reasons why a guy like, um, oh, what's his name, uh, did not develop well there. Uh, what's his name? Uh, Drazen Petrovic. Uh, that's why he was ultimately traded. Uh, but, I mean, then again, he went to the finals two times. Report. I mean, 1990 and 1992, you know. Uh, I'm trying to look to see the, yeah, 1990 and 1992. So at the end of the day, you're going up against the bad boy Pistons and Michael Jordan is prime. Well, that's not anything to be ashamed of, you know what I'm saying? But he did coach a lot of, he, he coached some talented teams. and uh, But he was, like I said, was very well liked. And um, another thing I remember about him was that he didn't really play favorites. Uh, he wasn't a suck up to stars, and he was a bit of a little bit of a disciplinarian, but for the most part, he had a cool personality. Now, Lenny Wilkins. Lenny Wilkins was a much better player. All right, Lenny Wilkins, Hall of Fame basketball player. Older than Rick, had a uh, Rick Adelman. Uh, was drafted in the first round, six overall pick in 1960, eight years before Rick Adelman. Selected by the then St. Louis Hawks, now the Atlanta Hawks. And he played from 1960 to 1975 for St. Louis Hawks, the Seattle Supersonics, the Cleveland Cavaliers. He played there for a while and then played one season with the Portland Trailblazers. Now, he was never a teammate with Rick Adelman. Adelman last played with the uh, Trailblazers in 1973. Wilkins didn't join him until 1974. So after 1975, the thing they do have in common is that they both retired after the 75 season. However, before they changed the NBA rules, when uh, active players could no longer coach, Lenny Wilkins was a player coach with the Sonics and the Portland Trailblazers. He became a head coach. Matter of fact, I'm trying to remember, was he the head coach or an assistant coach? Let me make sure of this. Yes. Um, he was a player coach. Let's just put it like this. He was a player coach with both the uh, Sonics and the Portland Trailblazers. And after he retired in 75, he became the full-time head coach with um, Portland. And then his most successful stint was the Seattle, for the Seattle Supersonics in 1977. Ultimately, he won a championship in 1979 with the Sonics. They went to the finals in 1978 as well, losing in seven to the Washington Bullets. He, had a, uh, he coached that team until 1985. Took one year off. I think he went into broadcasting for a season. And um, then in 1986, he was selected as head coach of the Cleveland Cavaliers, where he had another successful stint coaching. Um, until 1993. Then he coached the Atlanta Hawks from 1993 to 2000. And then he had not so successful stints with the Toronto Raptors. Well, sort of a successful stint with the Raptors, but then a not so successful stint with the New York Knicks. Um, as a player, I'm not to focus on the coaching uh, accomplishments. As a coach, NBA champion in 1979. NBA Coach of the Year in 1994. Four-time NBA All-Star Game Head Coach. 1979-1980, 1989-1994. Voted a top 10 coach in NBA history. Uh, back in the 90s, top 15 coach in NBA history recently. And he's on the Cleveland Cavaliers Wall of Honor. And um, with the Cleveland Cavaliers, if it were not for Michael Jordan and the Bulls, then that Cavalier team may have had more success. I don't know about winning a championship, but
but maybe some final appearances. Definitely 1992. Um, as a coach, Lenny Wilkins was not a guy that had what you call one of those offenses that favored a star. Um, it was almost, it was pretty much like a, um, his offense was team orientated. All right. Like, like for instance, you know, when you were those Cleveland Cavalier teams, they had stars, but you didn't have one guy shooting the ball 20, 25 times a night. One night, Ron Hopper might have 30 points. Another night, Brad Doherty might have a big game. It's whoever who's going. You know, whoever was, 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 you know, whoever was hot that night. Maybe one night it might be Larry Nance. It was never about one guy with, with that team. Same thing on the defensive end. Everybody had to contribute. Uh, one thing I also remember about Lenny Wilkins' teams is that Notoriously, they, he was very hesitant to double team, which is why Michael Jordan and some other guys, but especially Jordan, had some big games against the Cleveland Cavaliers. That's what I remember about about that. When you look at the the record, he didn't have the same win percentage as Rick Adelman, but then again, he coached longer and he coached some bad teams. But altogether, he had a 53.6% win percentage, but collected 1,332 victories and 1,155 losses. Um, so I think from 1995 until 2000 and, was it 2010? It might have been. I know for a very, very long time, Lenny Wilkins was the all-time leader and victories. But I can't remember exactly when it ended, but it might have been 2010 or late 2000s or something in that, in that range. But anyway, he broke the win record, which was previously held by Red Arback back in 1995. 938 wins with his 939th win that season. Now, if I got to go with a better coach or a more accomplished coach, I got to go with Lenny Wilkins. I mean, a championship matters. It does. Uh, now, to, to the best of my memory, both of them went to the NBA Finals, but only one of them won a, cha a championship. Um, you know, so at the end of the day, that matters. Also, you know, he has them beat as far as all star game head coach four to three. Alderman never won coach of the year. Alderman never won a championship. Alderman's not considered a top ten or fifteen coach of all time. So ultimately I gotta go with Lenny Wilkins. You know? Um which makes sense. You know, it was just a more and also, another thing that, that comes to mind before I end this video is that Alderman, for all of his regular season success, had some playoff flameouts, notable. Um, 1991, infamously in a series that they were supposed to win, I think they had 63 wins that year. They got knocked off by Magic Johnson in the Lakers in a year where they were supposed to win Portland then you know uh, even though those Portland teams were stacked Clyde you know was an MVP candidate in 92 Jordan the Bulls you know knocked them off even though on paper Portland was a better team than those Kings teams you know for all of their talent uh, you know the Lakers pretty much dominated them. And all of this was playoff stuff. Whereas, well, at least Lenny Wilkins won a championship. And, you know, at least Lenny Wilkins, considering the talent that he had on those teams, you could say a lot of times 
his teams were competitive. You know, oh, and another reason why I talked about, I said, well, Lenny Wilkins had a team oriented style with his offense. That's, that's a big reason why in 1993, yeah, that's a big reason why in 1993 when he became the head coach of Atlanta Hawks, that's why Dominique Wilkins was traded. Because to him, Dominique Wilkins was not a team oriented guy. Plus, Wilkins at the time was 33 years old, and that was seen as being old. But anyway, that's all I got to say about that. Tell me what you guys think.